Hello, my name is Ivan, kicking off a video series on Prisma Access. On this video, we will cover what Prisma Access is and what are the main components of Prisma Access. My name is Ivan Heredia, and I'm a professional services architect for Prisma Access. On this video, we will cover the introduction to Prisma Access. We will take a look at the Prisma Access Overview, or what is Prisma Access? Then, we'll take a look at the main components of Prisma Access, like Prisma Access for Users, Prisma Access for Networks, Service Connections, and the different management methods available for Prisma Access. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the overview of Prisma Access. Prisma Access is a cloud service provided by Palo Alto Networks. This service provides secure access to the internet and to business applications that may be hosted in SaaS, a corporate headquarters, data center, or instances that you may have running inside of a public cloud. As you can see, Prisma Asset sits in the middle of your data center or your headquarters, your mobile users and remote networks, and the internet. This allows Prisma Access to inspect all traffic in order to identify applications, threat, content, and it provides visibility into the use of SaaS applications and the ability to control which SaaS applications are available to your users. Being a cloud service also allows you to avoid the challenges of figuring out what type of hardware to buy, how much compute to allocate, because this is all provided as part of the service. It also minimizes coverage gaps or inconsistencies associated with distributed organization. In the past, perhaps you had multiple point solutions for remote access that you had to deploy across your enterprise, and the access was not the same. The user experience perhaps was not the same. Whoever managed it perhaps was not the same. All of this created inconsistencies in how these point products were managed. Well. With Prisma Access, you don't have to worry about that because it's all encompassed within the cloud service. Also, it being a cloud service allows us to take advantage of the flexibility and elasticity of the cloud. As demand changes, we're able to grow or shrink. We're able to expand to meet the oncoming user load. Or if the amount of users connected decreases, we're able to decrease the amount of compute resources allocated to Prisma Access. So now that we know what the high level overview of Prisma Access is and what it does, let's take a look at the individual components. And to do that, we'll first start with the mobile users. Prisma Access for mobile users provides security services that Palo Alto Networks is known for. For example, App ID, User ID, threat prevention, DNS security, enterprise DLP. All of these services are available with Prisma Access. Prisma Access for mobile users also provides an alternative to the traditional on-premises deployment of remote access VPNs. Instead of having to manage multiple solutions at various locations, you can manage it as part of a unified service in a single pane of glass. You're able to select the locations that are well suited for your users. We have more than 100 locations available to choose from, including locations in regions like Africa, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, Japan, Middle East, North America, Central America, and South America. For areas where we don't have any presence in the cloud, you can also use Prisma Access in a hybrid approach in which you combine Prisma Access for mobile users with on-premises firewalls that can run Global Protect gateways for areas where we don't have coverage. If you're familiar with Global Protect, the functionality is very similar. Users will connect to a portal. The portal will decide which is the best available location for a, a specific user. It will connect the user to that location. The user will build an IPsec tunnel to that location, and then traffic gets sent through that tunnel to Prisma Access. From Prisma Access, that traffic will be split to direct out to the internet from the cloud service, or leverage a service connection to reach 
internal resources that you may have stored in your headquarters, in your data center, in your cloud instance. All of this is logged and all logs are sent to the Cortex data lake. Now, let's take a look at Prisma Access for Remote Networks. Prisma Access for Remote Networks provides security services just like it does for mobile users. Things like App ID, Threat Prevention, User ID, enabling your remote networks to safely use common applications and web access. Remote networks connect to Prisma Access via industry standard IPsec VPN capable devices. So you don't need to be running a Palo Alto Networks firewall at that site. We just need any industry standard IPsec VPN capable device that can connect to Prisma Access and that we can send that remote site's traffic to. So that traffic may be forwarded to Prisma Access and then we can do similar to mobile users, outbound to the internet filtering, as well as provide access to internal data center resources or HQ resources through a service connection. Prisma Access for Remote Networks is managed in the same manner as mobile users, so you can use a single pane of glass to manage all of these remote sites. The ability to manage all of the sites through a single pane of glass that allows you to share policy across all of these sites and maintain the same level of security throughout all of the sites that are configured as remote networks. Now, let's take a look at service connections. Service connections are the glue that hold everything together. They connect Prisma access to your headquarters or your data center resources. It also leverages IPsec tunnels for secure transport over the internet. These are layer three routed connections which can accommodate static or dynamic routing and can terminate on any IPsec capable firewall, router, or SD-WAN device that may be sitting on your premises. These terminate on a corporate access node on the Prisma access end of the connection and the service connections are what provide the inbound connectivity to those centrally located resources that may be sitting in a headquarters or your data center or a public cloud instance. The difference between a remote network and a service connection is that remote networks can do outbound and inbound connectivity, whereas service connections are only inbound connectivity. Service connections, you can't route traffic out to Prisma access to the internet, whereas with remote networks, you can. Service connections are also special in the sense that they serve as the connection point for all of the routing that happens inside of Prisma access. So remote networks get connected to service connections, mobile user gateways, gateway locations that are selected also get connected to service connections and these are used if you need to route traffic between mobile users remote networks and through service connections to centrally located data center resources last but not least let's take a look at the prisma access management methods well right now there exists two methods for managing prisma access the first of which is via the cloud services plugin on your panorama management device so if you are already a consumer of Palo Alto Networks devices, you perhaps already have a panorama that you're using for logging, for management of your, your firewall policies. You can use the same panorama with a cloud services plugin to manage your on-prem firewalls and Prisma access through panorama. The second option for managing Prisma access is cloud managed. This is also a cloud provided service. If you don't have a panorama or you're new to Palo Alto Networks, this perhaps is the option for you. It's the ability to deploy Prisma Access and use the Prisma Access service without needing to deploy another on-prem device or a VM that you may have to run in the cloud. These two management options are available but you would use one or the other to manage your Prisma Access deployment, not both. Prisma Access uses Cortex Data Lake to store logs. So I think in every image that you've seen so far, you've seen how Cortex Data Lake is sitting to the side. Well, Cortex Data Lake is where all of the logging 
that happens for any of the actions taken by Prisma Access, any of the traffic flowing, any of the threats, user ID, app ID, traffic logs, all of this gets sent to the Cortex data lake and that's where it's stored. Now, Panorama, or if you use the Cloud Managed Prisma Access solution, both of these solutions have access to query the data lake and see the logs. If you need to forward those logs to a seam or an on-premise syslog device, you can configure that through the Cortex data lake. The data lake also provides cloud scalability across multiple secure locations. So if you have data storage requirements, there are various regions of data lake that you can choose in order to maintain your logs and meet the legal requirements that you may be required to meet. If you're a consumer of other products such as Cortex XDR, you can leverage the same Cortex data lake to correlate endpoint logs as well as firewall logs in addition to Prisma access logs to extend the capabilities of XDR across not only endpoints, but also network devices. As always, we welcome all questions and comments below. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button and subscribe to be notified of all new videos coming from the live community. Thank you all and have a great day.